Hi, my name is Cliff Anderson. I'm Associate University Librarian at Vanderbilt University and a member of Vanderbilt's Computational Thinking and Learning Initiative. And in this second of our series on NETS blocks, I'm going to explore how to draw geometric shapes on the screen. We're going to draw simple shapes on the stage using so-called command blocks. You're going to learn about turtle graphics, a novel idea for teaching kids and the young at heart how to program. And you're also going to learn about the concept of state and side effects, which we're going to explore in greater depth as we go along. So, ready to try out your digital drawing techniques? Let's get started. So what are turtle graphics? Today is going to be all about drawing. Drawing simple shapes like squares and triangles on the stage. But before we get started, I'd like to share a little bit about the way that this graphical approach to computer programming developed. The idea is called turtle graphics, or turtle geometry. Seymour Papert, a computer science educator who spent the majority of his career at MIT, developed the concept of turtle graphics in the 1960s. Papert aspired to create an environment for computational exploration, for learning by doing, so to speak. Inspired by the educational theories of Jean Piaget, Papert wanted kids to learn the principles of mathematics, not by memorizing a bunch of theorems, but by extrapolating rules from the success or failure of experiments they carry out. He termed this theory constructionism and went about creating a software environment to enable those experiments in learning. The software language he co-developed is called Logo, and a distinguishing feature of Logo is turtle graphics. This is the humble turtle that we're talking about. It looks more like an arrowhead than a turtle, but just use your imagination. The default sprite in NetsBlocks is indeed this abstract turtle, but you can also give the sprite any costume you like. If you want, you can also make it look like a real turtle. Just come over here and click on this right here, and you can see costumes. And sometimes it takes a moment to load. We're waiting. We're still waiting. It's almost there. Once it loads, you can see here that you've got lots of options to shape your particular sprite. And so, if you want, you can turn it into a beetle, uh, you can turn it into a butterfly, lots of different options. But we're going to stick with, for now, this so-called simple turtle shape. Okay, so the turtle moves around the stage using a Cartesian plane. The tip of the turtle, when it starts, is pointing to 0, 0. So when you create a new program in NetsBlocks, you'll always start your turtle out at 0, 0. Let's try this for ourselves. I'm going to drag this XY block over here, go to X0 and Y0, and then let's try clicking on it and see what happens. If I click on the button, I move back a little bit, but then when I click again, nothing happened. So why isn't anything happening? Well, when I click on the block, the sprite doesn't move because it's already at the center of the stage at coordinate 0, 0. But if we change some of the values in the block to find the boundaries of the stage, then uh, we'll see that it indeed moves into different places. So here, if I change the sprite to x180, y0, you're going to expect it to move along the x-axis to the right. Ta-da! And if we move back to the center, we can move, for example, on the y-axis to 180. Oh, it disappeared off the side of the screen, but top of the screen, but no worries. Let's bring it back to 120. There it is. We can go to negative 120, that's going to drop us below, and we'll see. If we click on that, there it goes. And of course, you can get to any coordinate this way, just by putting your x and y values. So you see that whenever we enter a coordinate value on this Cartesian plane, the sprite will move to that particular place. And using that combination of x and y values, we're able to move the sprite all around the stage. But when we're drawing figures, this has its limitations. Just moving the sprite around the stage gets old quickly. If we want to draw shapes, 
We don't want to just hop around. That's not really the best way to do things. There might be a way to do it, but we'll get to that later. What we need is a couple of other blocks to turn these movements into actual line drawings. So we're going to select from two categories of blocks in the palette to make our movements more productive, namely the motion blocks and the pin blocks. So where do I find those? Here's motion, we're already on it, and then these green ones are the pin blocks. So the first blocks that we're going to bring over are two of the motion blocks, move 10 steps and point in direction. Now you notice that point in direction has here a number already in it. And if you drop down, you can see that that number, 90 degrees, stands for right. And you can see that 180 degrees stands for down, and 0 degrees stand for up. So it's sort of like the directions in a compass. And if we combine these with the move block, then we can start moving the sprite in different directions around the stage any number of steps. So let's just start back. Well, I'll put this at 0, 0. I'm going to click on that and it go to zero, 0, And then let's take this and say, okay, we're going to put that point in direction there. Point in direction 0, so that's pointing down. And move, let's say, 50 steps. Try that. And Sprite's not moving. Do you know why? We're always going back to point zero, 0, so it doesn't look like there's any movement. But now we can see that when we disconnect it from going back to the beginning, the sprite is moving up. All right, let's draw a square with this. These two blocks provide us with what we need to walk a figure like a square or a circle. But we want to see some of the product of our sprite's voyage around the stage. To trace the sprite's steps, we need a different kind of block. And that's again under this pin category. So I'm going to bring over pin down and pin up. So these two blocks will tell this system to either start tracing a line on the stage or to stop tracing a line on the stage. And if we use them in conjunction with the move blocks, we can get the turtle to draw a figure for us. Let's start simply. We're just going to create a square on the center of the stage. So, okay, I'm going to place this sprite at the center of the stage. And then I'm going to take these blocks, which I've already got, and I'm going to duplicate them four times. You can right-click on it and get these duplicates. So I'm going to do that four times. There we go. Okay. And now we want to start moving the sprite around. Okay, so I'll put the first one up here and the second one here. And we want to turn this time to make a square. Let's, let's start by turning to the right. And then we're going to move this one and we're going to go down. And this one will go to the left. Let's see how that works. Well, it did something, but it didn't actually draw anything. So in order to see this, I'm going to pull down the stack of blocks. You see how they disconnect? And I'm going to put pen down right here. Then I'm going to reattach them by lifting them up. You see that white line? That indicates that they'll snap together when I let go. All right, so when I click this now, you see that I get a nice square. I still have this pin up block. And what's the purpose of that? Well, the problem is that if we add something else, for example, let's say we want to draw a square and then move on to draw another figure, but we didn't want the figures to be attached to one another. If I just go ahead and pull over another move block, let's say another move 50 here, and I click on the stack again, you see that the turtle continued moving and tracing the turtle's steps. To prevent that, I can do the same experiment, but this time bring the pin up there and voila, ah, it didn't make any change. Again, why is that? Well, it just traced over itself. So we need something else here called a clear block at the beginning. And voila, now when we run it, it made the nice square and then moved graciously to the side so that we could see the square. So this introduces something that we call state. When we make changes using these command blocks, these blocks that have these notches that fit together that have the square edges, when we use these command blocks, we're changing the state of the sprite's little world. That is, our blocks have the effect of altering the program's environment. For reasons that we'll get into later, 
These command blocks actually generate what are called side effects. And we're carrying out computations by clicking on these command blocks. And those computations create side effects that become visible on the stage. In NetsBlocks, these changes persist unless we close and reopen our project. So after clicking on a stack of command blocks, we have to remember where we left the state of the world. If we forget, for example, to put pen up at the end of drawing, then whenever we move next, the pen will be in the state of being down and lines will appear on the stage. So it's a little bit like when you start a project on your desk and you take out all your notebooks and pens and paper and then you finish your project, ideally you want to put all that back so that when you start the next project, you won't have that mess and clutter in front of you. The same thing applies to programming languages. You want to be aware of the state so that when you start your next series of computations, something you did in the previous series of computations doesn't mess up your environment and produce an unwanted side effect. Okay, let me wrap up then. We covered a lot in this video. We learned about turtle graphics. We saw how a sprite moves across a coordinate plane. And we learned how to draw a square. We also learned something about the concept of state and side effects. So given what you've learned now, can you write a program that draws a triangle on the stage? Or if that seems too easy to you, how about a polygon? Try drawing some different figures, and next time, we're going to see how to create a circle. But the challenge with making a circle is, we want to do it without having to reproduce so many command blocks, because as easy as they are to create, it gets tiresome to have these big series of blocks. Next time, we're going to learn how to shorten those stacks of blocks by using control structures to keep it simpler and more compact. But that's enough for today. Thanks for joining me, and see you next time. Goodbye.